In today's video, we're going to be going over the upcoming pattern, diving into multiple severe weather opportunities. We will, of course, dive into the Storm Prediction Center outlooks towards the end of this video. We also have a few just major storms in general that could bring flooding and wind concerns, uh, among other temperature patterns that we're going to be watching throughout the week as we have colder and warmer times ahead. So tons and tons to talk about today. Let's dive into things. I want to just take a look at tomorrow on Saturday may 18th and we're looking at a very very stormy uh day for a lot of the southeast and up the east coast here so starting for texas louisiana and arkansas and you take that all the way across the gulf and up the east coast there we're seeing thunderstorms prevailing and showers in between them so definitely a very nasty weekend day there for the eastern seaboard we do have a 994 up here for south central canada bringing some showers here to the northern plains and upper midwest but other than that not too much to discuss uh, Sunday here, what we see is a 999 here across the plains. So we're seeing uh, a lot of just thunderstorms here, I'd say, towards the east. Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, and Kansas. And then some more showery activity back here for the four corner states. Snowfall and rainfall showers happening there across the northwest. And then for the southeast coast here, thunderstorms and showers are prevalent. For Monday on the 20th, we see a couple of areas of low pressure here across the plains, both for Canada and the United States. And this is causing precipitation to prevail for the Four Corner States, some of the northern Rockies as well there, and then throughout the plains and Midwest, even, as I mentioned, extending up into Canada. Although this will be a little bit of a break here for the East Coast as we see a little bit less activity there. Same story for the West Coast. By Tuesday on the 21st, we see a 996 setting up there for Kansas. Probably some thunderstorm activity becoming possible there for Texas and Oklahoma. We'll be watching for that as we have this kind of rising motion throughout portions of the South Central and Gulf states in general. So we'll be watching that very closely, of course. As we keep, well, let's take a look here towards the north as well. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but we do have heavier showers and perhaps thunderstorms throughout the plains and upper Midwest there. Also some snowfall throughout the Rockies. So this is kind of uh, a jack of all trades storm. We have this kind of southeast flow here into these states. We have this kind of warm front boundary setting up with stronger thunderstorms and showers and then snowfall back for the western area. So uh, yeah, and a well-rounded storm, I would say, uh, and a lot of severe weather along that one will be possible. Same story for Wednesday. Uh, we have a 986 now for the Great Lakes, so very, very heavy precipitation throughout the Great Lakes areas of both Canada and the United States there. And then more severe weather chances underneath that low. Again, Storm Prediction Center outlook at the end of this video where we'll see a lot more. The Northwest, we do see these showers and snowfall showers prevailing. Uh, we're really getting close to the time of year where we're going to be done talking about snowfall as a whole. Uh, for Thursday here on May 23rd, what we see is a 998 there for Colorado. Thunderstorms around for Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and eastward up into Tennessee and Kentucky. And then we see some snowfall for the northern Rockies as a result of this low. So again, kind of a well-rounded one. Also 989 here. We do see a little bit of a cold front perhaps here for the Northeast. So don't be surprised if Thursday we see a couple thunderstorms up there in New England. Uh, wouldn't surprise me one bit uh, with that look. Friday here on the 24th, uh, we see a 1,003 here over the Ohio Valley. 1,003 down there for the Southern Plains. And then kind of the, the mother low, if you will, 998 up here for the upper Midwest. And as you can see, this is kind of creating a trifecta of thunderstorms and showers around these areas as a result of the overall low pressure across the middle and eastern regions of the nation. Uh, as we keep going here, Saturday on the 25th, we see, again, a very summer-like pattern, a lot of low pressure around the nation. And how do I even pinpoint where the precipitation is? I guess everywhere outside of this bubble would be a good way to put it. Uh, maybe you can put one in this area a little bit, but still there's a couple of green spots all over the place. I mean, everywhere is kind of seeing a chance of some showers and thunderstorms here for Saturday as we begin to enter into a very, very summer-like pattern. A couple of particular areas to point out would be uh, the plains here, where there's definitely a pocket of perhaps heavier thunderstorms or showers there. And same story for the Gulf states up through the mid-Atlantic and maybe extending into the northeast here. Again, another pocket of thunderstorms and showers for the next weekend, Saturday the 25th. Here's Sunday on the 26th, and we see another low-pressure system uh, really skirting across the nation here, entering into the Ohio Valley. Uh, we see that areas in here 
uh, are seeing some thunderstorms. Missouri, Illinois, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan. Uh, and then we also see this 998 over South Dakota there, uh, bringing some snowfall to the Rockies again and rainfall in surrounding areas. And finally, for Monday on the 27th, uh, we see this 1002 right here. Interesting, we're seeing this diving cold air behind this one. Uh, really strong cold front. Wouldn't be surprised to see a pretty elevated risk of severe weather if this panned out this way. This is pretty far out. Uh, and then also we have 1001 over the East Coast, extending a cold front below it, perhaps with some severe weather chances underneath as well. So a lot of activity to say the least. Now let's take a look at this European models AI version. And this does get us to 15 days instead of just 10. So we'll get a little bit of an extended outlook here, perhaps that we get to look at, which will be exciting. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look uh, at the day for tomorrow on Saturday. We already kind of saw it, but again, very stormy along the Eastern seaboard. We got good agreement there with this European AI model. Uh, we begin to see that activity continue for the Gulf States, this kind of Dixie Alley region. Here's Wednesday and Thursday, another chance of severe weather there. Uh, but we do kind of eventually lift off with this, where I think we return to the Plains and Midwest, as well as the Ohio Valley being the forefront of that activity at some point here in the upcoming pattern. Uh, although this model really wants to take us back towards the Gulf State, seeing a lot of the activity as we approach the month of June. Uh, the interesting thing to note is as we approach the summer, uh, you, that, that area of potential thunderstorms is going to expand. And we're going to see a lot of those days where there's a good 20, 30, 40% chance of rainfall. And, you know, every few days you'll have a little thunderstorm. Uh, and that's what summer is like. In the springtime, it's a lot more organized and along those low pressure systems. But we're going to see things get a lot more messy as we move into June and July, uh, where those chances of th thunderstorms is going to be a lot more widespread. Might not be as severe uh, sometimes, but... Uh, definitely chances of thunderstorms will be around almost daily for that time of year. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at the total precipitation, which will give us a good idea of just where to expect that activity. And as you can see, it's going to be a majority of the nation kind of, again, just everywhere except the Southwest here on this one as well. I mean, uh, if we look for the above average activity. It's there for the Northwest, the Central and the Eastern States. So uh, the Southwest gets dodged, which they do oftentimes in the warmer seasons. So no big surprise there. Total snowfall is continuing to increase. So speaking of big surprises, here is one. Uh, the Rockies are expecting perhaps a foot, two, or even three feet of snowfall over the next 10 days. Crazy, crazy stuff for late May. Temperature pattern, again, on that European AI model. Uh, we do see a warming trend in the east. So we're getting warmer and warmer. This is by the midpoint of next, or yeah, this upcoming week, Wednesday the 22nd. We do see a colder air mass set up over the west. But look at this, a little bit of warmth is intruding here to the west. And this is what we call a positive PNA. And all that means is warmer out west. And this could force the cold air eastward over time. So let's see if that ends up occurring here. Uh, it's definitely moving into the central states. So that cold is on the move. This is by Friday the 24th. Cold is here. I'll do a down arrow for it. Warmth is building actually for the west. Um, but we still have warmth over the east, although this cold air is moving in quickly. But what we're going to see is cold air is going to take back over for the west, perhaps, which could just put an end to this cool down before it even really gets started. We do see some cooler air over the east here by that Saturday into Sunday, 25th, 26th, with the warm air now on the move towards the east and colder air taking over for the west, which would be a negative PNA, which all that means is colder over the west. So we're really just flip flopping back and forth. Um, we see that cold really prevail for the west. Warmer air continuing to win out for the east here all the way by Wednesday the 29th. Let's see though, we get warm in the west again by about Thursday the 30th. And then finally some cold air does make it to the east. So we see this prevailing now uh, for June 1st. Pretty disappointing there uh, with this huge warm blob over the central states. But look at this, another cold area over the west could end this cool down in the east very, very quickly. Of course, we can't see it because it's the end of the model run, but I am curious to watch this and, and track it moving forward. We will see in due time, though. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at that every day like we always do. Storm Prediction Center, day one. We have two general thunderstorm risk areas, one here for the east, one for the north central. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, that is where we expect general thunderstorms to occur. Anything's possible in severe weather is really, really challenging to predict. So be sure to heed every watch warning and advisory, regardless what color you're in. Even if you're in the white, you could see some thunderstorms as these aren't always perfect. 
Um, in the darker green, we have marginal risk of severe weather. That's our level one risk. And that is where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. The yellow areas, Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and even a bit of Wyoming there, slight risk. And then also Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and a bit of Florida. That is where we expect scattered about severe weather reports to come in. That's our slight risk or level two risk of severe weather. Day two, uh, we see that the southeast expands here. Again, we have two general thunderstorm risk areas, two marginal risk areas, but we only have one slight risk, and that's going to be for Florida, this is our better yet, Alabama, Georgia, uh, up through South Carolina and southern North Carolina there. Day three. Uh, the southeast still has a general thunderstorm risk, but that's about it for now for Sunday on the on the 19th here. Uh, we have three overall general thunderstorm risks as we have one across the central states and one across the northwest. And then again, we have this marginal risk over the plains and that slight risk over the plains. So be on the lookout for scattered about severe weather reports. For day four, we have an extended day outlook for Monday on the 20th. Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, and Missouri there. This indicates at least a slight risk of severe weather. Could be even worse, so... Definitely, definitely, we'll, we'll be paying attention to that. And the next day, we actually see this area expand eastward. Tuesday on the 21st, we're seeing a lot of states involved here. Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Indiana here. So very far stretching. And again, this means at least the slight risk. When it's larger like this, this makes me lean more towards possibly an enhanced risk or more. So definitely, definitely we'll be paying attention to this day for Tuesday on the 21st. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.